welcome to this uh, toxicological elimination uh, module in this particular module we will study about the various elimination uh, techniques in theoretical that how once a uh, 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 toxicant enters into the body system then how we can eliminate it in a theoretical way what are the various responses for those toxicants and where they may get to give their symptoms where may they get deposited over the period of time and what are the prima facie or primary treatment to handle uh, such type of scenario when anybody get exposed with the toxic substance so first thing is that uh, if uh, a, a toxic substance enter into the biological organism then how we can eliminate it so usually there are three basic ways through which they can be eliminated from biological system one is the excretion through kidney liver lungs or other ways of means uh, this uh, usually the first three things like kidney liver and lungs it is being provided by the nature so once you are exposed to that toxic environment or somehow by the inhalation or dermal absorption you are encountered with this uh, toxic substance then the kidney liver and lungs they try to repel all the effect of uh, that particular toxicant into the body system another route is uh, the detoxification by changing the chemical whatever chemical enter into the body system into something which is less harmful through the biotransformation remember by actuation of uh, uh, your human body by contamination your human body is uh, tuned to repel the effect of that particular toxicant and in this particular process uh, they may re they release certain hormones certain enzymes to detoxify that foreign chemicals the last uh, option is uh, the storage and usually these uh, toxicant or toxic substance they may get deposited into the fatty tissues either in the decomposed form or as such now among all available elimination tools the kidney are the dominant means of excretion in the human body and you may see that if anybody is having the kidney problem sometimes they may go to the dialysis etc to remove the toxic substance from the body system or through the blood stream the toxicants are extracted by the kidney from the blood stream and they are extracted with the urine now toxicants that are ingested into the digestive tract are frequently extracted by the liver so once they are become they become the part and parcel of blood stream then with the help of a liver then body system can detoxify body system can remove that toxicant lungs are also means of elimination of substance particularly those which are volatile in nature now this is again the thing when you expose or you are working in an environment and sometimes toxic substance may get released so first thing is that when if you if you inhale or sometimes through the mouth if it goes into the body system so your all lungs etc the nature gave, gave you another thing that you try to resist the things by sneezing uh, by coughing etc so chloroform and alcohol for example they extracted partially by this root of lung other root of uh, excretion are skin via sweating hair nails etc and sometimes you may experience that uh, the color of uh, color change in nail give a prominent information that something is going wrong within your body system maybe the contamination of a toxic substance maybe your body is not working properly so you need to identify those symptoms and history is there are so many evidences in the history like one of the most prominent uh, um, story is the toxification of napoleon bonaparte it was uh, he was given a regulated quantity of arsenic and the first hand after his death the his his hair was analyzed by physician and they found that he was toxified by arsenic 
Now these roots are usually minor compared to the excretion processes of kidney, liver and lungs. But importance of these roots cannot be overlooked. Now detoxification. Liver is the dominant organ in the detoxification process. The detoxification usually occurs by the biotransformation where the chemical agent are transformed by reaction into either harmless or less harmful substances. And biotransformation reactions can also occur in the blood, intestinal tract, wall, skin, kidney and other organs. Now remember, sometimes this biotransformation is useful to detoxify your body and sometimes it is highly undesirable. The reason is that whenever you come into the contact of any kind of toxic substance which after decomposition may produce a lesser harmful toxic substance and it may get deposited into the fatty tissues and the later part of your life it may create a problem. So be careful while you adopting this detoxification route. Now storage, this particular process involves the deposition of chemical agent mostly in the fatty areas of the organism but also in the bones, liver, blood, kidney etc. Now when, when you are young then definitely you can overcome such type of scenario but the later part of life when these chemicals or your body is not supported by the fatty tissue formation then definitely this may create a problem. So that's why the storage can create a future problem if organism food supply is reduced and the fatty deposits are metabolized over the period of time. The chemical agents stored will be released into the bloodstream and resulting the possible damage. So you may experience uh, by seeing all the par all part of society that some people, those who are working in uh, the chemical factory in the later part of their life they may uh, in, they may encounter several other diseases which are uncommon in nature so this type of thing is again uh, uh, creates a problem and sometimes that these decomposed product which are de deposited into the fatty tissues may create a gene problem mutagenic problem etc now once uh, we study uh, the different responses uh, of the toxic end to the bio biological system, we must see the things into two aspects. Those responses which are irreversible in nature or those responses which are reversible in nature. So sometimes these uh, toxic end may create a genomic problem which are highly ir uh, irreversible. So we have enlisted different type of responses uh, of the toxic end like carcinogen they causes the cancer mutagens they causes the chromosome damage and sometimes like methyl isocyanate they created a problem it's still say after 30 40 years it's still the people are suffering for those kind of ailments reproductive hazards causes damage to the reproductive system the teratogen they causes the birth defect now sometimes you may experience certain responses those who are reversible or may not reversible like dermatotoxic affects skin sometimes you may experience that the, you, uh, your skin may get contaminated with the toxic substance maybe either in the vapor form or in a liquid form and there are are permanent uh, damage to the skin or sometimes uh, the skin is decolorized etc hematotoxic they usually affects the blood hepatotoxic that affects the, the liver and sometimes uh, uh, there are certain deposition may take place into the liver and those effects are quite visible in the liver function. Nephrotoxic usually affects the kidney so that the detoxification step is hampered. Neurotoxic affects the nervous system. Recall the, the world war when the Germans they used the nerve gas or mustard gas they particularly affected the, the nervous system. Pulmonary toxics affects lungs because it attributed to the, the dangerous say, asbestos sheets or uh, lead, uh, lead particles 
they may destroy the available surface area for oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange with the blood. So, the problem is to determine whether exposures have occurred before substantial systems are present. So, you need to assess that particular problem before going ahead with the toxicological studies. The major object of objective of toxicological study is to quantify the effects of suspect toxicant on the target organs. So, how we can identify those things? Study. The most toxicological studies uh, the animals are used, but within the regulatory regulations or regulatory body supervision, usually with the hope that you can extrapolate those results with the human being. And sometimes it proves to be beneficial and sometimes it not. So, once the effect of suspect agent have been quantified, the appropriate procedures are established to ensure that agent is handled properly. And then you may go ahead with that what are the symptoms, how you can detoxify it and how it can be stored and how you, your body system is being protected from the contamination. Now, before we go ahead uh, with the toxicological study, because once you start your step, you must know that who is your enemy. So, before you going to, before you undertake any kind of toxicological study, you must identify the following five factors. The toxicant, what is the toxicant? What its MSDS says, material safety data sheet says? What are the different limits? Then, what is the target or test organ? Where it is going to affect first? Where it is going to deposit it first? Which organ is responsible for the detoxification? So, you must identify those target or test organs. The effect or responses to be monitored. Now, remember there are two type of responses. One is based on the primary symptoms. Suppose you are working in a uh, chlorine environment. So, first symptom you, will, you may experience the dryness of the skin and irritation to your eyes. So, this responses must be monitored. And this is a clear cut indication that something is wrong within the system. Then, if it enters into the biological system, which system is going to be affected and how it can be affected? Sometimes you may experience the stomach ache, sometimes you may experience uh, some problem related to the kidney. The fourth aspect is the dose range. See, it all depends on various factors including your age. Suppose if I am young or you are young, then definitely you may require a certain higher quantity of those doses that compared to the kid having the age of say 5 to 10 years or having the elder person who is having the age of 60 plus. What is my physique? What is my sex? So, it all depends on the dose range because Dose range is the primary factor through which you can monitor your responses. It is just like if you take a one peg of wine, then definitely your dose, uh, your responses would be different compared to if you take three, four different peg of wines. Then what is the period of test? That is how much and what is the time duration of exposure? Because ultimately, by this way, you can analyze that whether it is acute exposure, subacute exposure, chronic exposure or subchronic exposure. So, while taking any kind of toxicological studies, you must remember five different points. The toxicant must be identified with respect to the chemical composition, its physical state. For example, benzene can exist in either liquid or a vapor form. So, the entry route would be different. Because if it is in the liquid form, you have one may take the benzene through the ingestion route. And if it is in the vapor form, then he, may, he or she may take through the inhalation. So, the entry route would be different as well as the target organ would be different. And simultaneously, the responses and other things would be different. So, you must identify with respect to its chemical composition. And each physical, physical state preferentially enters the body by a different route, requires the different toxicological studies. So, the whole line of action would be different if you, you are taking this thing into uh, account. Now, while 
going for a treatment of um, any kind of toxic substance uh, for acute poisoning etc you must remember the five finger rule what is the elementary aid covered with this a how we can decontaminate with what is the antidote therapy how it can how the the person or human being being transported to the safe, safe place and how we can secure the evidence so this is the five finger rule because each and every aspect is essential i am going to discuss this particular thing in detail in the subsequent slides now first thing is that once anybody is contaminated with the toxicological uh, to toxic substance then you must provide the elementary aid so that uh, primarily you can decontaminate the things you may start the uh, detoxification process this may be by the breathing the circulation with the help of uh, uh, primary drug you may go for hospital for the ecg then fibrillation then different type of airways so everybody see this is uh, the first thing because you are you are practically aware about uh, the toxic substance so you must adopt this type of uh, elementary aid for to uh, elementary detoxify the things the second thing is the detoxification now these are the usual routes of uh, detoxification by vomiting maybe with the help of uh, uh, pharmaceuticals may uh, within the first hour that may be the help of a stomach wash etc maybe with the help of solvent acid alkaline solution that that is purely based on your uh, toxicant it may be the gastric may be conscious or unconscious adult it may require that 100 to 300 cc of warm water with the normal saline wash stomach wash the children isotonic sodium chloride solution this is the one of the most usual way sometimes active charcoal may be administered to get uh, administered together with the different laxative through gastric tube so that uh, the other routes of uh, uh, um, uh, detoxification or other routes of excretion may be active the other possibilities like forced diuresis hemodialysis hemoperfusion plasma pheresis these are the different other routes and remember all these things must be administered by a trained person there are certain antidote therapy these are applicable to various specific cases now these cases must be defined a priori the reason is that for various kind of poisons there are antidotes there is there are availability of antidotes the only thing is that you must be well communicated the problem in the bhopal tragedy happened that prima facie the information supplied to the, the civil authorities that it is a chlorine leak but it was not it was a methyl isocyanate leak the, the primary treatment for uh, chlorine leak is to take as much as water you can but it is the fatal for mic because mic is highly reactive to uh, water and it creates the cyanide poisoning so you must aware that what is the remedy and it should be well communicated so if you are working in a plant all kind of information must be available ready hand and the same thing is applicable for antidote therapy because if there is anything poison poison then the antidote must be well communicated there must be less specific active charcoal binds poison in the gi and inhibits their absorption you must know all these things chelating substance bind heavy metals and enable their elimination can we all these things can be found in icu ambulance so the first hand thing is required in this case is that the knowledge of material safety data sheet once you know that how hazardous this particular chemical is then you can go ahead with this type of therapy now once 
that things are not working like antidote therapy is not working, detoxification, usual detoxification or primary treatment is not working. The patient or those person, do, those who are get contaminated with the toxic substance should be transported to the proper institutions or hospitals for a medical care as soon as possible. This is, uh, this transportation is the only possible when circulation has been stabilized and airway is cleared. The reason is that in during the process, you, you may be in a position to detoxify the things. Now remember, the securing evidence is uh, extremely important. The reason is that this not only provides the legal help, but also it gives a proper information that what is the chemical, how it was released, how the person's, person was exposed to that particular chemical, what are the different reasons. So once the things are stabilized, you must secure the evidence. Again, I am giving you an example of a Bhopal gas tragedy that the first time when the MIC was released and people become fatal, 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 then the first autopsy which took place uh, after a, uh, a day or so, then they found out after the stomach that they found out there is a cyanide poisoning. Then they scrutinized the things that how this cyanide came into picture. And then they found out that this is the methyl isocyanide. Primarily, they were treating for chlorine. So, securing and this gave the, the information that MIC was leaked and then the reverse engineering gave a proper information. So, securing evidence is extremely important. This is critical in diagnosis that what is the substance is, what is the route of entry, what was the target organ? This can be carried out with the help of uh, sampling, blood, urine, stool, air, etc. And you must perform the accurate labeling from where the sample are corrected, what is the age, what is the sex, how uh, con uh, concentrated uh, toxicant was. Blood and urine sample should be secured before administering any antidote because sometimes because I told you in the previous modules that water may become the fatal only thing is that the right dose differentiates between the poison and a remedy. So the end suppose for chlorine water is the antidote but for, MI, for MIC it is not. So blood and urine sample should be secured analyzed before you administered any antidote. Now, there are various difficulties associated with the, the toxicological studies. The major problem is that there is no ethical way to get human volunteer. Hence, used to uh, model system, we are bound to have uh, some certain model system like rats, cat, dog, rabbits under the administrative control of certain ethical societies. Now, this hinders the production of new chemical almost as stringent as a new drug because you, you are not getting the proper samplers. So, in this particular chapter, we have discussed the different type of excretion, remedial measures, etc. And in the subsequent, sub uh, uh, subsequent studies, we will discuss that how we can go ahead with the various toxicological studies, what are the different parameters, those who administered the proper toxicological studies, how we can get, uh, uh, how we can create the dose versus response curve, because these dose versus response curve was an integral part of the toxicological studies. So, by this way, thank you very much.